In this last part of 6.3, one thing we talk about um, finally are trigonometric identities and proof using trig identities. And this is really meant just to continue to expand our vocabulary in trigonometry. And the first thing we want to talk about are the three other trig functions that we haven't discussed yet, right? So we know we know about sine, we know about cosine, and we know about tangent. Well, we call these the reciprocal functions appropriately, because if I take the reciprocal of these functions, I create new functions. So, for example, this means that 1 over sine is what we call cosecant of theta. Right? So this is cosecant. And sometimes IB, especially our book, will use this abbreviation instead. So just to make you familiar with it, but CSC is generally the commonly accepted one. Um, 1 over cosine is secant. Yes, this is, oops, secant. And 1 over tangent is cotangent. So you have cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And now we have six trig functions, right? We have sine, cosine, tangent, and we have their reciprocals, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And generally, we tend to write them this way in this kind of three by two grid so that we see that relationship between them, right? We see that, we see that reciprocal relationship. So let's start to work with this a little bit. So we're given that theta is a reflex angle and we're given that cosine is 3 fifths. I want to find the values of the remaining five trig functions. Well, let's kind of draw what's going on here. If theta is a reflex angle, then theta sits here. Well, it sits, actually it sits anywhere. I could sit in the third quadrant. I could go out this way. Or I could go all the way out into the fourth quadrant somewhere. Well, which is it? Well, we know that cosine here is positive. So because cosine is positive, I know I end up in quadrant four. So sometimes I like to draw my triangle so that it's actually oriented as if it were in quadrant four. So here is my triangle in quadrant four. Here is, I guess my reference angle actually, not necessarily theta, but we can work with this. And cosine is 3 fifths. So since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, Let's just call, for the sake of simplicity, 3 my adjacent side and 5 my hypotenuse. And based on the Pythagorean theorem, then, that makes this missing side, my opposite side, 4. So let's take a look at what I need to do. I want to find sine. We know cosine. I need to find tangent, and I need to find these three new functions as well, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. We know we were given that cosine is 3 fifths. And now that we have the triangle, we can form the rest of our, uh, our sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And these remaining three functions, cosecant, secant, cotangent, are just reciprocals, right? So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so 5 fourths. 5 thirds for secant and 3 fourths for cotangent. Now, however, we're actually not done. I realize I just missed something, which is the sign, S I G N, of each of these functions, right? Because only cosine is positive in the fourth uh, quadrant. So sine should actually be negative, tangent should be negative, and since sine is negative, then cosecant is also negative. Since tangent is negative, cotangent is negative. So we just want to make sure we adjust positive or negative based on the quadrant we're in, right? Don't ever lose sight of that. Right? Because I'm only I'm in quadrant 4, cosine only and its reciprocal are positive. Everything else is negative. Let's take a look at some more identities here. So our quotient identities. Well, we've started to um, play around with these a little bit. We've talked about one over sine is reciprocal. We might have seen this a little bit in the last problem, right? Maybe you've noticed 
a connection between these three values a little bit. Well, these two quotient identities go like this. Go a little bit bigger with my pen here. We have that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. And based on our reciprocal identities then, since cotan is the reciprocal of tangent, then cotangent is cosine over sine. And here's the way I remember t the tangent identity in particular. Well, if I write out my functions the way I do, the way I have, actually even if I go all the way back up here, sine cosine tangent, sine over cosine equals tangent, right? Sine over cosine equals tangent. They're all right in the same column. You read them from top to bottom, and that's your identity. So they're your quotient identities. We also have what we call the Pythagorean identities. And it starts off as this, and it's kind of rooted in a unit circle. We're not gonna go too much into the derivation of this right now, but this is kind of one of the guiding ones here, and it's sine squared, whoops, plus cosine squared equals one. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. If you need to memorize anything, I mean, it's on your formula sheet, but if you were to memorize one, it would be this one and the, and the tangent one. But for Pythagorean identities, this is the one. We can derive two more if we think about trying to eliminate either sine or cosine. So if I were to, to divide everything through by sine squared, well, Anything divided by itself is one, so sine squared divided by sine squared is one. Cosine squared divided by sine squared. Well, cosine over sine is cotangent, right? So this is cotangent squared, and then one over sine is cosecant, so this is cosecant squared. So here's another Pythagorean identity. And I can form one more Pythagorean identity if I take my initial one and follow the same process except do it with cosine. So the next one I've got here is, well, sine over cosine is tangent. So this is tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. And how do I remember these? Actually, I do exactly what I just showed you, but also notice that my cos go together, cotangent and cosecant, and they're non-co-equivalents, tangent and secant. Those are your pairs, sine and cosine, those always go together here. Sine squared plus cosine squared is one. Cotangent, cosecant go together. Tangent and secant go together. The next one we're gonna look at are our sum and difference formulas. And these can be useful, particularly when we're dealing with angles that are not the few that we had talked about as being particularly important. Let's say I have sine of a plus or minus b, right? Sum or a difference, it doesn't really matter here. It works kind of the same way. So for sine, it's gonna work this way. Sine a cosine b plus or minus cosine a sine b. This is what I'm just gonna tell you, just use your formula sheet. Just stick with the formula sheet this one can be tricky to memorize and keep the moving pieces straight. What is important to keep in mind though, and what is important to remember, is that whatever, if I have plus or minus in my parentheses here, I keep it that way in the formula. So plus goes with plus, minus goes with minus. If I have so sine of something plus something, I keep my plus. Likewise with minus, sine of something minus something, I'm gonna keep my minus, so keep the same sign. With cosine, it works a little differently. I have cosine A, cosine B, minus or plus sine A, sine B. So in this case, whatever operation you have in parentheses, you take the opposite sign when you actually use this formula. And we also have one for tangent, which I actually should have given you and I should have left myself some room and I didn't. So I'll just put it up here. 
Um, tangent, we could actually we could actually derive this one if we wanted to ourselves, but um, I'm not. I don't want to put that in a video. It's going to take a little bit of time here. So the tangent sum and difference formula is this way: tangent a plus or minus tangent b divided by one minus or sorry minus or plus tan a tan b. Again. Just accept it as it is, use the formula sheet, save yourself the headache. But this is how you use it. I want to find sine of 75 and tangent of 105 without a GDC. Zoom in here a little bit. So sine of 75, I want to be able to break up 75 degrees into a sum or difference of two values that I should know, two of my kind of important values. And the first one I think of is 30 plus 45. So here's my A and here's my B, right? Here's A and here's B. And we're just gonna apply the formula. Sine of 30, cosine of 45, plus, we keep the same sign for sine, cosine 30, sine 45. And using the hand trick or using rote memorization or what have you, we know that sine of 30 is 1 half. Cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. And sine of 45 is root 2 over 2. And I can simplify this and I get root 2 over 4 plus root 6 over 4. And just keep in mind that we cannot add these square roots together. I cannot call this square root of 8 over 4. It's just not how that works. It's not how adding radicals work. Um, this would be my expression for sine of 75. Root 2 plus root 6 over 4. Same logic applies for tangent, for tangent 105. I want to know if I have some convenient values that I know that I could maybe add together to get what I'm trying to get to. And I do. I could do, I don't know, maybe 135 minus 30. That's the first thing I can think of offhand that seems to work. So let's apply our formula again. We have tangent of tangent A plus tangent B divided by one minus, right? Same sign on the bottom, opposite sign on the top. Uh, sorry, same sign on the top, opposite sign on the bottom. Tangent A, tangent B. So tan of 135 puts me in the second quadrant. Tan of 45 is 1. The second quadrant is negative, so this is negative 1. Tangent of 30 is going to give me root 3 over 3. And then 1 minus negative 1 times root 3 over 3. So I get, oh, that's just going to be 1 plus root, negative 1 plus root 3 over 3. And then I'm going to get 1 plus root 3 over 3. Sorry, 3 plus root 3 over 3 for both of these. That's my fault. So negative root 3, positive root 3. And I'm going to get negative root 3, all right, negative 3 plus root 3 over positive 3 plus root 3. And we could go in and rationalize and simplify that all we want, but I'm just going to leave it as is for the sake of time because I do have one more set of identities that I want to go through before um, I end this video. Finally, we have the double angle identities. And just like sum and differences are used for a sum, Double angle identities, these actually come from the sum and distance, uh, difference formulas. So this is kind of an extension of the sum and difference formulas. So sine of 2 theta. Well, if I were to show you how this actually comes, comes to be, I would start by calling this sine of just theta plus theta, but we're going to get into that another time. This works out to be 2 sine theta cosine theta. For cosine 2 theta, we actually have a few that we can use. The one based on the double angle, sorry, the one on the sum and difference formulas. 
is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. But by our Pythagorean identities, I have a couple other forms that I can use that are just as important. And you can prove these on your own if I want. Maybe I'll ask you to do this on a test or something. I don't really know. But we also have these as options for cosine two theta as well. Both do come in handy. All three come in handy. You should be ready to use them. And finally, for tangent two theta, again, this just comes from the sum and difference formulas, two tan theta over one minus tan squared theta. So one quick problem with this, evaluate this formula right, or this expression right here. And if your first thought is, I don't know what sine 15 is, and I don't know what cosine 15 is, that thought should be followed by, I wonder if there's a formula that I can use, an identity that I can use to simplify this. Two sine cosine, well, let's see, I have that right here. So this whole expression is equal to, sorry, sine of two times 15, which is sine of 30 degrees. And based on either your hand trick or rote memorization, you know that sine of 30 is one half, and you're done. That's all there is to it.